Is it really that expensive to raise a child in Malaysia? Well, in my previous video, I talked about the cost to raise a family comfortably in KL and many commented that having a child is so expensive, they'd rather not have kids at all. But here's the thing about raising a child, it's actually not that expensive. Certainly, if you're trying to compare with other families on what they can provide for their children, there's no end to it because there's always another richer family who can provide more. So in this video, let's talk about the healthy basic minimum expenses that's needed if you want to raise a child here. 2022 has been a challenging year. Market crash and looming recession. But with the right skills and knowledge, you can turn this crash into cash. You know what I mean. Just like Warren Buffett said, when people are fearful, you should be greedy. So join us either on the 10th or 11th of June, where we will share with you how to invest in the stock market and choose the right asset that best fits you. You can find the link in the description below. Now, back to the video. And we can divide this into three stages and along with it, the cost. Let's begin with prenatal. At this stage, congratulations, you just found out that you're becoming a parent soon. And it's the best <laughs> news in the world. The first thing that's gonna happen is mommy will need to get regular prenatal checkup. You can choose to go to private clinics, which will cost around 100 to 200 ringgit per visit. The good news is, you can always go to a public clinic like your clinic data nearby. It's actually free. Mummy will receive routine checkups, ultrasound scanning, and even free supplement from the government. So you will actually get all the necessary prenatal care for free. Then the next thing is delivery. Delivery can be costly when it comes to private hospital. A natural birth will cost around 4,000 ringgit onwards, while C-section will cost around around 7,000 ringgit onward. But again, there's always government hospital. In government hospital, normal birth is only 10 ringgit onwards and C-section is 100 ringgit onwards. In fact, my first son was born in PPUM, a government hospital. It was a C-section delivery and he had to stay for an extra two days due to jaundice. And the total cost came up to around 1,000 ringgit. Now, once mommy and baby are out of the hospital, the next cost that we'll incur is confinement. This practice is actually optional as there's no real scientific evidence behind it. Personally, when my first child was born, my wife was just staying at home with her parents. We did bought some herbal packages that cost around 500 ringgit and cooked it on a daily basis for her. And the cost for these three items spread across 9 to 10 months. Now we enter into the newborn and infant stage. One of the most important thing that your baby need during this period is medical care such as checkups and vaccination. But thanks to our national immunization program, you can get all this for free in government clinic. Baby are just like any human, they need food. But between 0 to 1 year old, all a child need is actually milk. And breast milk is actually the best and cheapest way to feed your baby. If you want to do this, there's a high chance that you will need breast pump and feeding bottles and a cooler bag. Breast pump will cost around 500 ringgit while a set of feeding bottles and cooler bag can come up to around 100 ringgit. However, we do understand that sometimes breast milk is not an option. In that case, you will have to buy formula milk. And a pack of Dutch Lady 0 to 12 months formula milk will cost you 50 ringgit for 1 kilogram. Assuming your baby will consume 1 kg worth of milk per week, then the cost will add up to 200 ringgit per month. However, this cost will slowly decline as your baby transition to consume more solid food. And even when they transition to solid food at that early stage, they actually don't eat much. It's not gonna add up to that much of a cost. The next things are diapers. The most affordable form of diapers are actually cloth napkins, which cost around 3 to 4 ringgit per piece. So the cost for 20 pieces will come up to around 70 ringgit. Since it can be reused again and again, this is actually a one-off cost compared to disposable diaper. However, personally, I would still suggest you to keep one or two pack of disposable diaper and use them only when you're going out with your child. This way, you will save up a lot of money. Talking about going out, your baby will need a stroller and a car seat. There are plenty of affordable ones today, all less than 500 ringgit. There are also branded ones that cost a lot more, but you can always look for second-hand ones which actually cost a fraction of the price. I got both car seat and stroller for 600 ringgit. When it comes to baby clothes, they are usually pretty cheap if they are not already free from hand-me-downs or gifts from your friend. If you go on Shopee or Lazada today, you'll find a set of infant clothes only costing around 10 to 
20 ringgit, sometimes even less. You may be thinking, what about baby cot? Honestly, based on my experience, usually your baby will end up sleeping on your bed. And the baby cot will be used as a storage for things. Those of you parents, you all identify, right? You all know what I'm talking about. Now let's move on to the next stage, the toddler and preschool stage. At this point, your child will have transitioned fully to solid food. But as I mentioned earlier, kids actually don't eat much. They will only need half a portion of an adult meal. Then when it comes to clothes, again, it's not that expensive. Just go and chop it in Lazada la. Then diapers. At this point, diapers usage would have reduced significantly. As your child have learned to control their bowels, the biggest cost that you can incur at this stage is daycare and preschool education. The cheapest that you can get for both in KL is around 600 to 700 ringgit per month. The cost can be reduced if grandma and grandpa can help with the daycare. So just send to school in the morning and then after finish school, go home and hang out with grandma and grandpa. In fact, I think that's a very good choice. Since they have started preschool, you probably need to buy stationery and bag for school. But it's actually not that expensive. Around 100 ringgit should be more than enough. Now we enter the schooling stage, which is when your kid is around 6 to 12 years old. By now, when it comes to food, your kid will likely start eating a full portion of adult meal. Then we talk about education. When it comes to this, there are plenty of choices in the market today. Yes, if you choose to send your kid to private school and stuff like that, it is gonna cost a lot of money. It can go up to about 30,000 or up to 90,000 a year. But there is the good old Sekolah Kebangsaan or Sekolah Jenis Kebangsaan. Like for myself, I prefer to send my kids to a SJKC. And the cost for that is around 500 ringgit to 1,000 ringgit a year. This would already include workbook, extra classes, and all the PIBG fee, and yada, 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 all the stuff. These days, school uniforms are very cheap. Again, just go Shopee and Lazada. La. You'll find it's about 30 to 40 ringgit for one set of school uniform. Assuming you buy two sets for a child so they can interchange every day, that will come up to around 100 ringgit. Then you may want to send your kid to tuition, and that may cost around 60 ringgit or 70 ringgit per subject. But that is totally optional. Maybe if you just spend more time with your kid, teach them a little bit more at home, encourage them to read up more, maybe they don't even need to go tuition. And one more thing I'll suggest you to do when they reach the schooling age is to start giving them some allowance. It doesn't need to be much, but the point is just to teach them how to manage money themselves. I would suggest giving them around 2 to 5 ringgit a day, so that will come up to around 100 ringgit a month. Looking at this, I bet some of you must be thinking, what about recreation, family time, you know, entertainment, all this don't need meh? Yes, you definitely need to spend some time with your kid and there's a lot of things you can do in KL that is actually free. You can maybe organize a picnic in Desa Park City with your kids. My parents used to bring me to free waterfalls like near Rawang, Templars Park and so on and we had great time going there. Because the most important thing for a child is not so much about what they are gonna do, it's about spending time with you. You are their best friend and as long as you're giving them attention, spending time with them, doing things together, they will be happy. But I think it would be still healthy if you allocate around 1,000 ringgit a year for any form of family entertainment. Maybe doing something special like going to Zoo Nagara together or maybe even Sunway Lagoon or stuff like that. The point I want to make is this. Having a kid is actually not that expensive. As long as you can spare around 1,000 to 1,500 ringgit every month, you can afford to have a child. As long as you don't go and compare with other people who are actually richer, who can send their kids to private school, who can send their kids to all those enhancement classes and buy their kids all the cool stuff, you are fine. Learning to live within your means, that is the most important thing. Yes, they won't have some luxurious, lavish life, but with a right budgeting, you can go through with it without much financial struggle. At the end of the day, raising a child does cost some money, but it's not all about money. When you want to raise a child, you want to raise a good kid. And what's the most important thing is family education and you spending time with them. Even if you have all the money in the world to throw it to them and lavish them, but they may not end up a happy kid because what they need is actually your time and your attention. So, what do you think? Do you want to have a kid? 